and welcome back to another video guys. Now that's right, today we're back for an updated Criterion Collection. Why am I doing another Criterion Collection already? I mean, it has been a while in all fairness. I think it's been about four to five months since my last one. Um, I'm doing it because I have grown the collection quite a bit. There's a couple really cool items which I've added and I've actually seen everything in my collection now bar one Blu-ray. And th th there's a reason for that and I'll explain it when we get to it. Even though I definitely should watch it because I paid money for it, I bought it and I own it and I will watch it at some point. But I've watched all of the movies um, in this collection. So I can actually talk about every single film here. So I thought this is kind of a perfect time before I get some more money and go on a Criterion Rampage and buy like another three or four. And it takes me a, a, like a good solid month or two to watch them. So I thought it's a good time to do it because I can talk about all these films. So without further ado, we're going to get started. Now these films aren't in any particular order really i guess i've got all the amaray cases together and then all the digipack style ones together um other than that they're sort of just in age sort of order i've got like the older films going into the newer films sort of i've sort of put them in what order i feel's best because there's no point putting them in number order there's over a thousand of these things what's the point so anyway let's get started so the first one up is an import but i really wanted to own this um i watched it last month for the first time and actually put it as my film of the month last month um, I adored this film, and that is A Night to Remember. Um, now, of course, people watched that video probably already know my opinions on it. I'm going to quickly go over them again, um, in case people didn't watch it. Um, something that a, a lot of people don't know about me is I used to have a weird obsession with the Titanic. Not the James Cameron movie, just the Titanic in general. I think it's fascinating. So I've always been intrigued. I've watched, I've watched loads of documentaries. Obviously, I've seen the James Cameron movie Titanic. It was like a BBC was it ITV, like mini-series with Toby Jones in, I think, which I watched. I've watched a couple other not very good movies or mini-series on it. Um, but this is probably the best movie, TV, like, uh, you know, non-documentary thing I've watched on the Titanic. This was absolutely incredible. I loved how we didn't have Jack and Rose in because I always found that very cringy in the James Cameron one. I just liked it when we got to the actual Titanic parts. Um, this is very much straight to the point. Of course, there are some things factually not correct because they hadn't found the wreckage of the Titanic when this film was made. So there are things like the boat snapping in half, which aren't in this film because they didn't know it snapped in half. So, but other than, it is a really well-made movie. I absolutely adored this. Um, it's a really, really cool Criterion to own. As you can see, what I've done is you can get the film very cheap here in the UK on Blu-ray because I do not have a region free player. So I've got just a normal disc there, which I slotted in. And with this one here, you get a pretty cool book and it's actually got real newspaper clippings in here. Um, you know, that is the actual Captain Smith and Light Tonner. Um, and yeah, some actual real world newspaper bits there. So that's really interesting. And of course the background picture is of the violinists. So yeah, this is a really great movie. In fact, I'd probably put it in my top five Criterion Blu-rays I've seen. Probably top three. Genuinely love this movie. It's incredible. We're starting off with an absolute cracker there. Um, next up, 12 Angry Men. Absolute classic. Um, you know, this is all mostly shot in one location. Um, and I really like films that do that. I find it really interesting because you know that the director and the writers and stuff, they have to convey these characters really well if it's going to be in one location. You have to have incredible dialogue, great acting to carry it. Um, and this is quite an older film. This is from 1957. Um, I think only a year after A Night to Remember. I think that's 58. Yeah, Night to Remember is 58. It's 57. Um, no, nope, falling over. Um, but I think the thing that works really well here is genuinely the dialogue. There's some fantastic things in this movie. Um, it is a real interesting court case where you are being thrown about like whose side to take and stuff. It's incredible like that. Still not really sure whose side I take because throughout the movie I chop and change so much. I've only watched it the once. It's definitely one I want to rewatch. Um, yeah, it's a really, really good movie. Um, I don't think it's perfect like some people. Um, plain white background. And a nice thick book. Because um, there's a couple of shots in there I think they could have easily redone. Like There's some shots where there's a scene where... Like you're walking across the floor and you can literally see the shadow of the camera. It's like, guys, maybe change the light a bit, reshoot that a little bit. Um, but that's real nitpicking. This is still a really, really great movie. Really do enjoy it. Stand those back up. Uh, next up, we have the Samurai Trilogy. 
Um, this kind of blew me away because I was expecting... I, I didn't really look into this before I bought it. I just sort of... Or I didn't buy it, actually. Um, in fact, shout out to Mr. Alex Pitt. This was a really great gift from him. So, And he's a top bloke. So thank you, Alex, for this. Um, but I didn't really look into this much before I added it to my wish list and was like, oh, I really want to see these. I just sort of saw it was the lead actor from Seven Samurai. I don't have that in the collection because they haven't put it out on Blu-ray right here in the UK. Um, yeah, so I, 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 I saw it as lead actor and I was like, oh, okay, these, and they, they all have quite good scores on IMDb and letterboxed. So anyway, I remember putting the first one in and just being blown away. Um, you know, the, the, the visual, the visually, the film was great considering, I mean, what was the first one? 1954. The colour palette was great. The backdrops, the scenery were fantastic. The costumes and sets were just brilliant. Um, yeah, I was quite blown away with how good it looked. The first film really wowed me. The choreography was really good as well. The only thing, you know, it's a, it's a very old film now. So I find it a bit harsh to be too judgmental on things like this. And like what I said about 12 Angry Men. Um, Sometimes when people got stabbed, it didn't look like they got stabbed. But then again, it's such an other film. I, I don't know how much I could have done with it. But all three films in here are really, really solid. Really good. Um, so you got uh, the first two films on disc one. And then the third film on disc two. And again, you get a really nice book in here. So very, very cool. Uh, really great little trilogy. If you're interested in expanding your horizons on older foreign films, this is genuinely a really great pickup for you. So, yeah. Next up is one which I had so many people recommend to me. When, when I started getting into Criterion's over a year ago now, you know, it's probably about a year and a half ago now I started getting into Criterion's. People just badgered me for this one. I'm like, James, get this one. Get this, get this, get this, get this. Um, and eventually there was a Criterion sale. Last year where it was like, um, or it was earlier this year I think now, where they were more or less get the, a Criterion £15, which I thought was quite good. So I finally picked it up and I have watched it. It's filmed by, of course, Mr. Trotsky and that is Stalker. Um, yeah, really, really interesting uh, Russian movie, which <laughs> is uh, 1979. I really didn't know what to expect from this. It looked... Very odd, very different, very out there. So, watched it and I thought it was some incredible cinema. I don't think I loved it as much as some people. There are some issues I have with the film, but it's pretty damn awesome at the same time. This film is incredible. Um, visually, I love what the film does. Um, the story of it, I found fascinating. It reminded me a lot of other films I've seen. Um, newer films, so, you know, this one done it first. I'm not trying to take any credit away from it there. Um... The dialogue was really interesting. But I found the sound mixing maybe to be the most fascinating thing about this. This film had a really unique sound editing style to it, which I loved. Um, but yeah, so inside this one you get like a little pamphlet type thing. And then some nice background artwork there. Uh, the cinematography was great in this film as well, I've got to say. Um, so yeah, Stalker was a really solid film. Okay, next up is the one Blu-ray in the collection I haven't watched. Um, and that is the Scorsese shorts. Yeah, I, I, I picked this up because I love Martin Scorsese. But normally I watch my films in the evening and I come around and I'm like, I'm, I'm going to watch a movie. So I have yet to put shorts on. I'm actually surprised at myself that I picked this up because I'm not huge on watching short movies. I do like them. Obviously, there's some incredible ones out there. It's just not something I go to often at all. But, you know, I will do it eventually. I have them in the collection. Um, so, yeah. And again, you get a really, really nice big book with this one. And yeah, we love Scorsese. So I'm very happy to own it. I'll get around to it at some point. Speaking of Scorsese, Scorsese even, um, <laughs> the next film up is a Scorsese film. And that is The Last Temptation of Christ. Now, I picked this one up pretty early uh, because I love the soundtrack. Every time I talk about this film, I mention the soundtrack. I'm sure people are sick of hearing me mention it when I talk about this movie. I love the soundtrack because I'm a big Peter Gabriel fan. So I got it on vinyl and I used to play it a lot. Um, and then when I got into Criterion, I was like, oh, cool. That that that, that soundtrack I love. The, the film that that's for, that's in the Criterion collection. So it's Willem Dafoe as well. It's like, we like a bit of Willem Dafoe. We really do. So picked it up. I really didn't think I was going to love this. I'm not a religious person. I know it's got it's quite a controversial movie. But I did have a really great time with this film. I really did. It's one of the underrated Scorsese films, I think, that I've seen so far. Um... 
don't get me wrong, I don't think it quite warrants the runtime. It is a bit too long. Uh, saying that, though, this is a fascinating movie. The approach that Scorsese has with this piece of, um, you know, historical, um, you know, religious, you know, you know, a piece of history, really. Um, it, it, it's it's fascinating, his approach with it. Um, I want to say all the ads do an incredible job. I really love the way this film flows. It's got a real nice charm to it at times. Um, I'm not sure how I'd feel if it wasn't Willem Dafoe. I really feel like he does sell a lot of stuff in this movie, which is really cool. And with this one, you also get like a pamphlet type thing. Um, but yeah, so yeah, The Last Temptation of Christ. Re I, know, I know it's a bit of a an, an odd one there. I know that some people might be a bit hesitant to pick that up, but it is a really good movie. Next up, we go from one of the longer films of the Criterion Collection to one of the shorter ones. This one only just clocks in just over an hour and a half, and that is Desert Hearts. One of the first ones I picked up, um, one of the first ones I picked up because there was a really, really cheap sale one. They had like literally 10 titles going for like £10 when I got into Criterion. This was one of them. Guessing it's just not a super popular one. But anyway, I did pick it up. And yeah, it's an interesting story, this, about, you know, two women who sort of fall in love. Um, and, well, their family, or, the, you know, the, um, uh, I think it's the dark-haired one whose family's ranch has stand on. They really don't approve. But it's 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 an interesting story. It doesn't do anything groundbreaking. Um, but it's it's still really good. And, you know, this is what Criterion do best. They put out films, which are good. It's rare you get a bad film in the Criterion collection. But they put out good films, which... People might not know as much. You know, you're not going to get your classic blockbusters really in the Criterion Collection. That's why this works well. You know, this is a film which I would have never seen if the Criterion Collection didn't put it out properly. So, open it up. This one's got some beautiful inside artwork. I'm going to take the little pamphlet out. Look at that. That's one thing I'll say. This film did have really good cinematography. Um, but yeah, Desert Hearts. Next up is one I sort of bought and forgot I had. <laughs> it didn't really stand out too much on the shelf, but I eventually got around to watching it. Um, and that is, it's, it's uh, 1991. I thought it was an 80s film. Got it wrong. Uh, the Fisher King. Um, yeah, really, really, really awesome cover, I want to say. I love that. Um, so this, of course, stars Mr. Robin Williams and Jeff Bridges, two absolutely fantastic actors. And it's a little bit less comical for Robin Williams, although he still has some funny moments. Jeff Bridges is great in this film. Um, and yeah, it just tells a very interesting story of these two characters sort of, get, sort of getting to know each other and becoming friends. And you get a really cool poster with this one. Um, really cool, and you get loads of information. So yeah, this is, this was a really solid movie, to be fair. It's one that surprised me. I thought it was going to be one of the more throwaway Criterion ones, but I really enjoyed this. It really stood out to me. Really, really solid movie. Um, if you haven't seen this one, definitely recommend picking it up. Next up, <laughs> probably one of the most popular Criterions, I think. I see a lot of people on YouTube picking this one up. I think this is quite an easy watch, this one. And I watched this one with my dad, and my dad really liked it. Um, sort of reminded us both a little bit of Mrs. Delphire, um, and that is Tootsie. Um, sorry, Mr. Dustin Hoffman, who's an actor who I absolutely love, really do love uh, Dustin Hoffman. Um, and yeah, here he's playing part of a guy who wants to get more parts in films. But there's so many blokes doing it, so he dresses up as a woman um, and he ends up um, going into a TV series as a woman. And everyone believes he's a woman and he sort of starts falling in love with another woman on the set. But she thinks he's a woman. And it's one of those type of stories. But it's really good. It's a really fun watch. It's really easy going. It's a it's a charm. It's pleasant. Um, it's not too long. It's it's just a really really nice time. And you get again sort of a nice big fold out poster thing with this one. And yeah, this is one which I've watched twice just because it's just an easy film to put on. It really is. That's the thing. While some of these films are incredible that I'm talking about, some of them are not easy to put on. You have to be in a genuine mood. Some of these are very serious movies. This is one of those. Yep, we'll whack it on. Easy peasy. Tootsie's a really good pickup. Okay, next up is another one which was gifted to me by the wonderful Mr. Alex Peer. Alex, you're getting shout outs today, boy. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I really do appreciate all of these that you've sent me. Absolute 10 out of 10 guy. Um, the next one up is Fast Times at Bridgemont High. Um, I was really excited for the release of this. I couldn't afford it when it was coming up, so Alex very kindly sent it to me. Um, 
it's a really, really fun 80s movie, basically. Uh, sort of a day in the life thing with some teenagers at school. And it works really well. There's some great music in this film. Some really good actors um, in this film. Um, and yeah, I, I, I got to say that th this film flows really well. It's really easy to put on, really fun watch. Um, I think some of them, the, the only issue I had with this film all sort of happened at the end. Like, all the characters seem to redeem one another and it's like, that's, I don't know. I don't know if you should be letting them off the hook here. They all sort of become friends again at the end. It's like, hmm, not sure about that. Because some of them, some of the things that that person did to that person, that person did to that person, that was real dickish. But anyway, last times at Bridgemont High. Um, yeah, really, really cool. Criterion, nice big book. So yeah, really cool pick up there. Um, where am I going again? Next up, we've got five Wes Andersons here to go over. Um, first up is Bottle Rocket, his debut film. Um, my least favourite Wes Anderson film, probably. You could tell the guy was trying to find his feet here. Still an interesting story. I don't mind this film. Um, yeah, I don't have loads to say about this one, to be honest, because it's very forgettable in his catalogue. And believe me, we're, we're going to go over more or less all of his catalogue here rather than the stop motions because they haven't put, been put out in the UK here. That's fantastic, Mr. Fox and Isles of Dogs. But um, yeah, uh, Bottle Rocket, it's it's a good movie, but definitely not his best. Then we have the one where you could really start to feel Wes Anderson find his feet, find his style, and that is Rushmore. This is a really, really solid film. Um, really interesting. I love the concept of this movie. The lead actor does a great job. Some of the humour is so good in this movie. Um, there's just some incredible, really incredible stuff in this film. Um, it's still not one of his best, but I do really like it. Um, big poster in this one. I think you get two things. Yeah, you get a little book and you got a big poster. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's one of his best still, but it's, it's still a really cracking movie, this one. Really good. And now we're into proper Wes Anderson. This is it. We've got his style now. Um, with one of my favourites here, the Royal Tenenbaums. Um, really, really great picture here. So many fantastic actors in here, from Bill Murray to um, Gwyneth Paltrow, um, Ben Stiller, Owen Wilson. Um, you know, some really, really fantastic actors in this film, I've got to say. Um, I love the cover as well. Really cool. Um, that's Owen Wilson's character there. Um, uh, Luke Wilson, sorry. Um but yeah, this is a really, really solid movie. I love films like this, like, get a big poster with this one. Big dis dysfunctional families in a big house. I love those kind of movies. So yeah, this is a really, really solid film. Personal favourite of mine, The Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou. Um, it may be my favourite Bill Murray performance. Um, he kills me in this. He's so funny. Um, the, story, the plot to this is weird and wacky and very out there, but I love it. The supporting cast is brilliant. Willem Dafoe cracks me up in this film as well. Jeff Bridges isn't quite as funny as he normally is. He plays actually a very different character for himself. Um, and of course, you know, you've got other people in here like Owen Wilson again. You know, you've got, you, you got your usual Wes Anderson suspects. But I absolutely adore this film. Um, it's a personal favourite of mine. Um, probably my second favourite Wes Anderson film. Um, yeah, again, you get you get a nice little pamphlet thing. You get like a little layout of the boat. Um, but yeah, really, really cool film. Very unique. Very unique. And then we have the Darjeeling Limited. This is a very odd criterion um, because it's it's got like, the, this is just stuck on the back, which I've never seen a criterion do before. And then behind you've got like a normal back cover. Don't know why they've done that because every criterion sort of has these same back covers where you've got, you know, you've got your runtime, um, you've got your aspect ratio and all stuff like that. Um, so I don't know why they've done that. But anyway, Darjeeling Limited. It's a weird film. The first half of it is classic Wes Anderson. It's brilliant. It's so fun to watch. And then the back half of the movie, because it really feels like a film of two halves, it just drops the ball massively. So it's such a weird movie. Um, I want to give it props for the first half, because I really do love it. Um, but yeah, that's the best of it. Adrian Brody is incredible in this film, I want to say that. I really do love him as an actor. Um, but yeah, you get a little fold-out book thing. Yeah, it's quite a new release here in the UK, this one. This one hasn't been out for too long yet. But um, yeah, the Darjeeling Limited, really good one. Well, pretty good. <laughs> Next up, Punch Drunk Love. Um, starring, of course, Mr. Adam Sandler. That's right, there's an Adam Sandler film with the Criterion Collection. Let's get Uncut Gems in there as well. That's my personal favourite Adam Sandler performance. 
I put this as a second though. This is still really solid. Um, very weird movie. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what to think about this film. I did like it quite a bit. Um, there is the inside. There is some background artwork with Adam Sandler sitting at a table by himself. Um, yeah, I, 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 say, I remember liking this film a lot. I watched this one ages ago. It's one of the first ones I watched. Um, but yeah, it didn't it didn't blow me away like some of the other films in this collection. But very good film, nevertheless. I still remember enjoying it a lot. Okay. And as I said, it's rare Criterion put out a bad film, in my opinion. But we got one. <laughs> I didn't like this film much. And I think some people do. I've noticed it is very mixed bag. It hasn't got a very good score on Letterboxd or IMDb, so I think there are a lot of people out there who feel like me about it. But I've also heard a lot of people say they really like this film. So apologies to the people that really like this film. It wasn't for me. That is Certain Women. <clears throat> um, it has quite a good cast. Laura Dern, Kristen Stewart, Michelle Williams. Um, three act actresses there that I really love. But I, I didn't like the way this film went about telling their stories, as in like it, it felt too choppy, too to split up um some beautiful background artwork though in here um the film done some things really well you know like cinematography i thought the actresses were doing the best of what they were given but i just found this film very soulless and i didn't really care about anything that was going on and by the end of it i was kind of like okay sort of happy that's over um so yeah certain women probably the weakest film in the criterion i've seen and the last of the amory cases ones is an absolute cracker this is a french movie which i absolutely love um, and that is Portrait of a Lady on Fire. This came out in 2019. Um, it was just fantastic film. Um, so many things I love about this film. First off, the two lead actresses give incredible performances. And the dialogue that goes with them is incredible. Um, the cinematography is absolutely gorgeous. And I think the plot is fascinating as well. Portrait of a Lady on Fire is definitely one of the best films I've got in the Criterion. Probably being my top five. Really, really, really fantastic film. And there's some real creepy aspects to this film at times as well, which I found interesting. Okay, so now we're on to like the digi pack book style ones. Yeah, so a bit more to show here. First up, we have Night of the Living Dead. Um, you know, George Romero, of course, one of the classic horror directors, zombie guys. He's the zombie king. This guy knows what he's doing here. This is the film that more or less started it all from 1968. Um, yeah, you could tell that this is like a very low budget first attempt sort of at directing films. But you've got to take that on the chin and admire it for what it is because this film did start a lot. It's really good. Um, some of the tension that's being built is fantastic. And I like a lot of the side characters um, with this one. And, you know, it's always fun to try and guess who's going to die next in the zombie thing. Two discs and a little book. So, yeah, very nice, very nice. Um, this was sort of a must-have for me. I like owning big pieces of cinema. And this this is very much a big piece of cinema. Um, so, yeah. Go. Next up is <clears throat> Doctor Strange Love, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. On point. Um... <laughs> Now, I know there's been a few other Kubrick films put out in the Criterion Collection in the US, in the UK. Pretty sure this is the only one we have. For Kubrick fans, don't worry, I do still own all the rest. I've just got them in the HMV Premium Collection. So don't worry, this isn't the only Kubrick film I own. <laughs> um, but it's a very good one. Um, it's a fascinating film. I love that how all of the artwork in here, by the way, is more or less from the last two minutes of the film. Um, <laughs> but it's interesting how... I, 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 I do like this film a lot, but I think it speaks wonders for 2001 because what this is 64, 2001 is 68, four years later, he made a film which really stands the test of time. And I think this one visually, it looks dated. Obviously, it's black and white. There's some grain on the camera, um, whereas 2001 looks clear and sharp and color and it's beautiful. Um, it's not a dig at black and white films. I love black and white films. Um, but anyway, um <laughs> Still love this movie. It's great. Some of the dialogue's great. There's some funny moments to it. It's a fascinating film. I don't think it's one of Kubrick's best. I, I, I much prefer... Um, I think you get, like, some books and stuff in here. Obviously, I don't want the video to be too long, so I'm not going to open it. Um, 
yeah, I prefer some of the, a, a few of his later films, but this is still a very good movie from Kubrick. Yeah. Um, next up, we have this one here. Sort of reminds me a lot of um, Fast Times at Bridgemont High, and that is Dazed and Confused. Would say I personally prefer this to Fast Times at Bridgemont High. I think um, the characters are a lot more interesting. I prefer, like, sort of the conclusion to the film. They play Bob Dylan's... Um, um, oh, God, what's this? Um, Hurricane. That's the song I was thinking of. They play Bob Dylan's Hurricane, so the film gets bonus points for that. Um, yeah, really, really awesome film. Again, just sort of like a day in the life. Um, but look at this. The die-cut cover. Love it. It's like zeppelin free um but yeah this is a really awesome movie and this one here look at the size of the book you get in there yeah i think you get something else yeah you get a poster and look at the size of this book look at that loads of loads of material there great and that's the best one of the best things about criterion you 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 watch the movie and then if you really want to get to know the movie more in terms of bonus features and the books and stuff, there's so much there for you to dig into. You know, you can really just spend weeks diagnosing a movie, um, which is great. Uh, don't get me wrong, I don't do it for all the films to the Criterion, but I like to do it for some. Next up, The Before Trilogy. Yep, um, I only got this about a month ago. Maybe a little bit longer ago. Um, I got it with like three Amazon gift vouchers, which I'd won in contests. So I actually got this for like a tenner, which was great. Um, so yeah, the Before Trilogy. Um, you know, I've got to say, uh, Judy Delphi, I think is how you say her name. She's fantastic in this. But Ethan Hawke is incredible in these films. Really love him. Um, but yeah, so really nice set. It's sort of in some thin, flimsy card. Wish they'd gone a bit better on that. But anyway. So Before Sunrise... The best film out of the bunch i think not by much they're all relatively on the same level um but this one here's the thickest one because you get the little book in there um pretty nice book you get a bit of information um and then the insides are all sort of relatively the same you get like a little picture of them and the disc um then of course we have before sunset which is weird because it's so much shorter than the other two the other two are like just over the two hour mark, I think. This one's like an hour and a half. Um, my least favourite of the three, probably, but I still really like it. And then Before Midnight. Really, really cool. Really great movie. These films, the dialogue is absolutely incredible. Um, the scenery, the sets, and uh, just beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I really did love this trilogy. Really, really fantastic stuff. Next up, okay, we're moving on to some Terrence Malick films here. I've got two. Uh, Terrence Malick is a bit of a mixed bag for me. He's not one of my favourite directors, but I do appreciate his style a lot because there's no doubt he's got style. He's got flair. Uh, first one up is The New World. Now, I actually got both of these Ter Terrence Malick films that I'm going to show you for Christmas by my parents. Um, so thank you to them for that. This one here I found so interested, interesting, you know, about um, some people coming to colonise... Um, and it was, it, I'm trying to remember this film because it was, I, it was a long time ago I watched it now. But it was, it's, it's, I remember it being very long. <laughs> it definitely could have been trimmed down. Um, but it's a nice little package. You know, the artwork in here is gorgeous. Take the book out. Three discs. I say you got a lot of reading material there. Um, so yeah, but that, it was a fascinating movie a lot all the actors did a great job and again like the sets and stuff were just fantastic here the dialogue was pretty damn good as well but yeah i mean just maybe a bit too long that one for me and then of course we have the tree of life which is one which some people absolutely adore i'm sort of on the other side i can appreciate this film this maybe has the best cinematography i've ever seen so yeah this film has some huge wins in it but there's no doubt it's a pretty pretentious movie, and I think at times it got a bit too much for me. I can appreciate some things about this film, but there are some other aspects towards it which I wasn't a big fan of. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still a very, very interesting movie. It does some great stuff, there's no doubt. And again, nice big book in there. Um, so yeah, my opinions on Terrence Malick might be a bit controversial. I like him, but I don't love him. Um, but yeah. Yeah, there we go. 
Right, next up, we're back on to Mr. Wes Anderson. We've got two films from him to show um, in this digibook style. we got Moonrise Kingdom here, which is a really beautiful, beautiful packaging here. And a really good movie. Um, I, I really enjoyed this film. Again, not one of my favourites from Mr. Wes Anderson, but I do really like this film. So it's a very, very interesting story of these two kids who sort of run away together. And in here, you get loads of stuff for this one. You get like a postcard, you get a poster, you get a book, you, you get loads of stuff here. Um, Criterion went all out in this film. Um, so yeah, um, really, really great stuff. Um, yeah. Bring Rise Kingdom. And then of course, next up, I'm sure you could guess my favourite Wes Anderson film. This is probably my top 20 films ever. I, I just adore this film. And that is The Grand Budapest Hotel. Um, Ray Fiennes kills it in this. He gives his best performance of his career. Um, uh, and again, Willem Dafoe cracks me up in this. Jeff Goldblum's really good. Edward Norton. A um, lot of really good stuff going on in this film. I absolutely adore this movie. I've seen it about 20 times, I reckon. I love it. Colour palette in this film is incredible. Like, unbelievable. And the cinematography is out of this world. Um, so you get a book with this one. And a poster. It is a little book. Yeah, there's like a book inside of a book in this as well. Yeah. Loads of stuff. Loads of stuff. So we'll slide that one back in. We're nearly there, guys. We're nearly there. We've only got about six or so more to show. But one of them's pretty big. Um... Hang on, hang on. There we go. That's away. So yeah, maybe uh, maybe my favorite film in the Criterion Collection. I just absolutely adore this movie. Um, next up, we got Roma, which is a Mexican movie. Um, come out in twenty eighteen. I want to say yeah, twenty eighteen. Went up for a lot of awards. Um, black and white movie, which is absolutely works, does wonders for the film. I think, and the cinematography is gorgeous. Now, I watched this last month for the first time. This was like the last one, last Criterion I had to watch before I'd seen them all in my collection. Other than the Scorsese shorts. Um, so yeah, I watched this. And I remember thinking the first 10 minutes, the film was struggling to grip me, but then it, it just grabbed me and pulled me in. And wow, what a fantastic movie. Um, incredible performances all round. Really fantastic film. It's on Netflix, so if you don't want to pick this up, I'd really recommend going, giving it a watch on Netflix because it is an incredible film. And look at this, look at the, look at the size of the book in this one, look at that. Look at that. Look at all this reading material you got. Fantastic. Sorry, it's getting a bit hot in here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, wow, what a fantastic movie. Um, so guys, yeah, if you haven't seen Roma, I'd highly recommend this film. Um, Cinematography-wise, wow, gorgeous film. Next up, next up. Um, we have... Parasite, the Bong Joon-ho film, which won Best Picture. This film put this man on the map. I mean, really, he'd, he'd had a few... He'd had, well, I bought the Bong Joon-ho set, and he'd had a couple films which were pretty popular before, like Snowpiercer was pretty popular. But I think this made a lot of people go, wow, I need to go back and watch his older films. Um, like me, I'm one of those. I've gone back and watched a lot of these older films now, um, and I love this director. Parasite is incredible. It's a fantastic film. It fully deserved that Best Picture win. No matter what people say, you know, the Joker should have won. Yeah. No, this fully deserved it. What an incredible film. Um, again, we've got a nice die cut cover there. And in here, we've got two discs and a nice little book. Yeah. Um, so, wow, what you know, fantastic movie. Really, really fantastic. And uh, slide that back in. There we go. Where are we at now? Oh, okay. Um, again, 2019. In fact, the next two films are also 2019. Got a little trio here. 2019 was one of the best year films, I think. Um, this was one of my favourite films of the year. It made my top 10 films of 2019. Um, had my favourite performance from 2019 from Mr. Adam Driver. I think we know what's coming. Um, wasn't sure I'd ever get put out because it was a Netflix original, but hey, here we go. Marriage Story. What a fantastic movie. Emotionally, this film is a roller coaster. Um, Scarlett Johansson and Adam Driver are both brilliant in this. They both give incredible performances. The film is so gripping. I, I absolutely adore this film. Um, 
And I love what they've done with the packaging here, because if pe people have seen it, remember there's a scene where they're in a counselling session and they're reading out notes that they've writ written about. I think it's things they love about each other. I haven't seen the film in a while. Um, Colour Ren. Um, <laughs> and, of course, we only hear um, Charlie's notes. We don't hear uh, Nicole's. But we've got our notes here, so you can pull it out and have a little read of it. And then, of course, you've got his, but he reads them out in the films, in the film. Um, and then, yeah, your little, little book. So, yeah, very, very cool. Um, so happy they put this film out. So happy. And um, this is one of the times where I was jumped up and down for joy. Like, yes, they're putting that out. Because um, normally a lot of these films I haven't seen. You know, I'm picking them up and trying them for the first time. But this was one like, yes, got to pick that up. So, Marriage Story. Great, great movie. Then we have from Mr. Martin Scorsese, The Irishman. Um, yeah, but again, a really good film from 2019. What can I say? I'll say what most people say about this film. Yeah, it's a bit long. You know, it does it quite warrant the runtime. No, it, it could have been trimmed down a bit. But, you know, still great movie. There's a lot of great stuff in here. Um, the actors are all doing a great job with their dialogue. Um, it's, fasc it's a fascinating movie. Scorsese is one of the top directors going. We all know this. And yeah, re <laughs> don't really know what to say about it, but it's because most people have already said what they needed to say about this film. You know, it was a pretty damn popular one. Um, I'll say Al Pacino gives... Yeah. Uh, not Al Pacino, sorry. Um, Joe Pesci. Even though Al Pacino, you know, still really good in this, but Joe Pesci sort of steals the show, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, nice little book in there as well. Um, I've watched this film twice now, actually. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bloody good time. Okay, let me slide this back in. Right, nearly there, nearly there. Right. Next up is a documentary. One on the one, the only, Mr. Bob Dylan. Um, this is, actually, this documentary is done by Mr. Mike Scorsese as well. So another Mike Scorsese product here. Hopefully, Criterion, please put out the Mike Scorsese, George Harrison documentary, Living in the Material World, because that was also absolutely incredible. Um, but this is a great documentary. I do love me some Dylan. People who know me, they know I love um, a lot of 60s, 70s and 80s um, artists. Because, let's face it, they're a lot more interesting than musicians we get today. Um, personality and music-wise. Um, but yeah, wow, what a, what a fantastic documentary. What a fantastic little set here. What a fantastic musician. Really cool book in here as well. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. But we got one more item to show. One more item, and it's a big one. The coolest thing I have in my Criterion collection, maybe my entire movie collection, to be honest. And that is, of course, the 1000th release from Criterion, the Godzilla box set. Um, now, that's right, I have watched all of these. I've watched them all. I'm now into the uh, Hasey era, watching them online, because that you just cannot own those films. There's no way to get them, so sorry, People are going to hate me for that. But this is the Hasey era um, from 1954 to 1976. Oh, 75. One year out. So close. Look at this box. This is beautiful. Now, I've done a whole video on this, guys. At the end of this video, I will leave a little recommended box to it if you want to check out my video on this. But, yeah, you know, you've got, I think it's 15 films in here. Really, really great. Oh, there's the little OB strip, which I took out. You know, each film's got its own little page with its own artwork. And then at the back is where you would have all of the discs. You sort of see all the disc holders there. But what I have gone and got is some custom-made cases. The only reason I've done this is just to protect the discs. Because, you know, when they're rolling around in there in the, on the car... Because I do think I'm going to pull a couple of these films out. A bit because I love my monster movies. You know the original Godzilla, Godzilla vs Kong. I think it was Godzilla vs Hedra I really liked weirdly. Um, there's a few films that I'm definitely going to want to rewatch a few times. Um, and I don't want to keep taking them in and out. So I've I, I picked up these, uh, which look beautiful. I put here in blue cases, hoping they're being clear ones so I can put them with my Criterion. I haven't put them with my Criterion because I don't match at all. So I sort of got them down with my actual little Godzilla monster verse sort of area to be fair i've got this mothra set and it's all go well with them the color scheme so yeah 
But yeah, so in here, you know, open it up. This one, original Godzilla, great movie. I'll go quick here. Um, Godzilla raids again. Rush, they rush this film out. Not great. Um, King Kong versus Godzilla. I had a lot of fun with this movie. A lot of fun. Um, Mothra versus Godzilla, really good. There wasn't much Mothra in this film though. Um, Ghidorah the Three Headed Monster was really fun. Invasion of Astro Monsters was really fun. Um, Ibera, Horror of the Deep. I really enjoyed this one. Son of Godzilla is a terrible movie. Terrible. Destroy All Monsters. Also, wasn't a huge fan of that one. Second case. There we go. Lovely artwork. We love it. Look at this. Not pixelated at all. This is like all properly done here. Um, Attack All Monsters. Not great. Didn't really like this one. Um, Godzilla vs. Hedera. Really liked this one. Really liked how creative and different it was. Um, Godzilla vs. Gigan. It was alright. Uh, Godzilla vs. Megalon. That was pretty good. Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. Um, enjoyed that one a lot. And Terror of Mechagodzilla was also really awesome. And then the last disc is supplements, bonus stuff and whatnot. Um, but yeah, really, really cool. And so yeah, there's the Godzilla films. I'm quite surprised Criterion put them out, to be honest. They seem more like Arrow video style, um, which is fine because I love those type of movies as well. But anyway, there we go. There is my updated Criterion Collection. Wow, it's been a long video. Really long one. Hope you guys have enjoyed it as always. Um, let me know. I know that there's loads of Criterions I should pick up and there's going to be people in the comments going, pick this up, pick that up. And believe me, I've probably looked at them. It's just Criterion's not the cheapest thing to collect. So I probably just haven't got around to picking them up yet. But anyway, thank you so much for watching as always, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video as always. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like the video, leave a message. And as always, I'll see you next time for another video. Bye-bye.